time for a night on the town. Here to make a bad bet. I'm done with you, though my patrons are not. The dark is transforming us into what we were always meant to be. Hey guys, welcome back. We're playing set today. AD Assassin, super fun to play, but also very hard to master. His passive makes it so his auto attacks deal bonus damage to low HP targets. So it's great for bursting, but it also makes it super easy to farm with. Your Q, the shurikens, your main poking ability that deals damage um, to all targets that it passes through, but it only deals 100% damage uh, to the main target. Any target hit after the main one is only going to receive 60% of, of the damage. So it's very important that when you try to poke the enemy champion, make sure that there are no minions in front. Your W is the shadow that you can place on the ground. Um, it is going to mimic your Q as well as your E. And if you recast your W, then you're going to switch places with the shadow. So it helps amplifying the damage and it also works as your mobility spell. Then you have your E, um, which deals um, area damage around you. And if you use it with the shadow, then it is only also going to slow the target. So as soon as you hit level 3 on set, that's why you can start pulling off those basic combos. Um, so what you want to do is that you do place the shadow um, on the enemy champion, then you E them to slow them down, and then use the Q. Because you slow them down first, so it's a lot easier to hit them with the Qs, the shurikens. And as for when you want to use this combo, play around the keystone. So in this game, I am using first strike because that gives you an insane amount of gold. But even if you have something like electrocute, then you want to play around that cooldown. So whenever that is up, that's when you use that W E Q combo. I don't know if you have tried it or not, but first strike feels really OP on set because um. Most of the time he gets to hit people first um, because of his W, so he has ranged dam damage and he also has a lot of um, quick burst damage, so he can get a lot of gold from this keystone. Of course you're going for those AD assassin items, the serrated Dirk is a big big power spike for those assassins, as soon as you have that your burst damage just goes through the roof, it's going to be absolutely insane. So your W E Q combo does not deal that much damage level 1, you know when you only have 1 point in each ability, as you start getting more points into your Q, that's why it really starts hurting. Uh, when I play against something like Aurelia, I really try to predict where she's going to move because we know that she's going to Q towards the minions. So instead of aiming on top of her, I try to aim on top of a low HP minion I have and then it should be a lot easier to hit her. But remember, to get the maximum amount of damage off guys, try to make sure that there are no minions um, in front of the enemy champion, so they don't lower the damage of your Q. So that's pretty much all you do in the landing phase is that you stay back, you last hit with your Qs, especially into ranged matchups. Then when your W, E, Q is ready, you have enough energy and your keystone is ready, that's when you go for this poking combo. It's insanely easy to farm, last hit with set as well, because of that passive. So you don't have to prepare the minions under the tower, just one auto attack is enough and they should be finished off. Now this champion is always good for solo queue, um, it's actually the perfect solo queue champion because of his mobility, his burst damage, low cooldowns as well later on, um, very good for roaming and also taking down those AD carries and all those squishy targets. So we got the ultimate up, this is what this champion is known for. When you use it, you go untargetable. So it means that you can also use it to dodge abilities with, and then you appear behind the enemy champion, spawning a shadow as well. And then you're going to store some of the damage you're dealing, and then after a short delay, it's going to pop. So it's similar to a Yone E. Um, so a lot of your burst damage is in this ability. To get the maximum amount of damage off, you want to use your ultimate first and then you can place another shadow and then use your E and Q and remember to use that auto attack as well. 
because any squishy that you hit with this combo, they're going to get one shot straight up. Especially if you manage to get like a triple shuriken combo. But your passive, it deals like bonus damage based on the target's maximum health. Make sure that you finish uh, the combo off with your passive. You do that when you can finish the enemy champion off. Um, so when you go for the kill, make sure that you get that one auto attack in. Because that passive actually deals a lot of damage. So never underestimate the amount of damage it, that you can do with your auto attacks. Of course, if you're not able to do stuff in the mid lane, um, you can just show in the wave and then you can just roam. So I like to roam bot lane a lot. I do that because um, they have at least one squishy target in the bot lane. Um, top lane, that could easily be a bruiser or a tank. So they will be a lot harder to take down. But an AD carry, they're just going to get straight up one shot as soon as you have your ultimate up. So very easy to pick up kills in the bot lane. So that's why I like to roam bot lane a lot. So remember, always use the W and then your E and then your Q. Make sure that you slow the target first because it makes it easier to hit the shurikens. Because said in the landing phase is all about hitting this basic combo. If you can do that once or twice, then you can wait for your cooldowns and then you go all in with your ultimate. So we got the mythic item, the Eclipse. This is what I like to build the most on this champion. Um, it's very consistent, but you can of course build the other mythic items as well. The Prowler's Claw, the Dust Blade. Personally, I really prefer um, the Eclipse. It also gives you some sustain and it also has a shield and some really nice damage as well. So all around, it's a very good mythic item. This is how you want to push as well, like the main um, poking combo is also how you push waves out. So if you cannot look for kills in the mid lane, WEQ the entire wave, or attack the last remaining minions and then you just roam. AD assassins are so good at roaming so you really have to make sure that you're abusing that. And of course because we have first strike guys we're going to get so much gold because that WEQ combo is almost instant. So we're going to get gold from all of these abilities. But you don't have to use first strike. Electrocute is also really good. And if you're playing against a heavy and bruiser and tank uh, composition, then you can also use Conqueror. But these are like the three main keystones that you use on this champion. Of course, make sure that you manage um, your energy as well, uh, because if you mess it up, then you're going to die just like I did. Um, so be careful that you don't spam your abilities and really play around that energy as well. It's important to know that you can get um, some energy back with the W passive. Um, so if you hit, if you and the shadow hit the same target with a mimic ability, then you're going to get some energy back. That is absolutely crucial so you can go for those extended fights. So most AD assassins tend to fall off after the mid game. When you get to like the late game, that's why they start falling off. But this champion is actually really strong in the late game as well. Because he's very mobile and he has super low cooldown on his ultimate. So even if people build counter items like the Sonya Sauglas, your ultimate in the later stages is going to be on a much lower cooldown. So even if they dodge your ultimate on the first attempt, the second attempt is going to be a kill. So this is also a champion that you can make work in the later stages compared to most other AD assassins. And this is of course the burst damage that you have. When you manage to get a lead on those AD assassins, you're going to absolutely destroy those squishy champions. Of course, look to roam a lot. It's absolutely important, guys, that you really abuse that roaming power that you have because Seth is very mobile, super mobile, and he also has very good gap closers. 
even if people flash away, you have double gap closers. You have your W and then you have your ultimate. So it's extremely hard for people to escape, especially if it's an AD carry. So really abuse your roaming potential. Um, push the waves out mid lane if you're not able to find kills. And if you're not able to get the tower plates, just show out and just roam bot. You don't always have to roam bot though. Um, if the enemy, champ, uh, enemy jungler is a squishy target, then you can also invade the enemy jungler. And maybe he's doing a red buff or blue buff or something, you can kill him there and take his buffs as well. That is going to tilt the jungler. Um, probably going to make him rage crit, who knows, but... Really try to make sure that you abuse... Um, his roaming potential, it is so important, because that is how you're going to pick up a lot of these kills. So the next item is going to be the Axiom Arc, you can also go for Yumus Ghostblade. Yumus Ghostblade is like one of the best lethality items that you can get, um, but Axiom Arc is very good in the early to mid game, so you want to get that ASAP as well. You can just keep pushing here and when the bottom tower is down then you can rotate to the bot lane because um, if you get into the side lane then you have a lot more room to work with. So much harder for people to escape so you can just easily chase them down and get the kill as well. So I got the tower in the mid lane and we're also sitting on a lot of gold so you can just reset here and then get the next neutrality item. And that is going to be the Axiom Arc, and then we also get the Lucidity Boots, so that gives a lot of ability haste on both of these items. And that's also really what's going to help out your late game. Lethality is not a good late game, but ability haste is because your ultimate and your other abilities will be on a very low cooldown. So going to be super mobile, and you also have double gap closers. So now the mid game started, you just want to be in the sidelines. Um, of course, play like an assassin, meaning that you try to flank people, you know, camp in brushes, wait for the squishy targets to appear. They're almost always going to greet for those cannon minions, um, especially if they see like a big minion wave, they're definitely going to greet for it. So just camp in a brush, try to make sure that you have the red sweeper, because if you have it, then you can clear out the vision as well. So you're 100% certain that people are not trying to bait you out. Uh, split pushing in the silence. Um, you can 1v1 most champions in the game. Even Bruiser should be manageable um, as long as you're not too far behind. Um, the key thing here is that if you're playing against a uh, tankier target, then you want to make sure that you hit them with a triple shuriken combo. So use your ultimate, then you place your W shadow, and then use that EQ. So I had to hit them with the triple shurikens because that's going to burst down even the Bruisers. Get a flanking position behind the targets, you are an assassin, so you have prime targets, the mages in the mid lane, the AD carries, the squishy carries and so on. You don't always have to ult to kill somebody though, uh, because if you have like your mythic item and another lethality item completed and you're not behind, then just do one W, E, Q and then one auto attack for that passive proc should be enough most of the time to finish them off. So don't just waste your ultimate, um, we do have the extra mark though, so the cooldown will definitely be lowered, but you don't have to waste it on every single uh, chance that you get to kill an opponent. Because if you can kill somebody without using that ultimate, then you have that for the next target. So instead of only being able to take down one target in a fight, you might be able to take down two or more. And that is really going to make a difference in those team fights. You can see that burst damage is absolutely insane on this AD Assassin. Really have to make sure that you hit people with the shurikens. That is what matters the most. Because if you don't do so, you're not going to put people at low HP and then you will also not be able to proc your passive. Now I got the Yumus Ghostblade, of course the best lethality item for Assassins. Um, it gives you everything you need guys, a lot of AD ability haste. And also that out of combat movement speed, so you can like move around the map a lot faster. 
As for when you start active, of course, when you found the target and you want to run them down, make sure that they're not escaping. Because now you pretty much have three gag closers, four if you also count in your flash. So we have a fully stacked Ingenious Hunter. Um, you can also use Ultimate Hunter, but I feel like it's a bit overkill because you also have the Axiom Arc and in the later stages then this ultimate is going to be on a very low cooldown anyway so you don't get to use it um, that much or that effectively compared to other runes. Just like that and the target is going to appear. You don't need to use the ultimate if the target is within the W range if you are this fat guy so don't waste it all the time. But it's better to be safe than risk having the target escape. So at this point in the game here, normally you get the armor pin item and because people will be starting to build armor and then you get the Cerulda Scrudge. Um, that is super OP, um, of course you get the armor pin, but even more importantly you also get that slows on your ability, so on top of having that E, you also have this passive now. So it makes you better at chasing people, but it also makes you better at kiting. You also have the Futures Market, so it actually has really great synergy with the First Strike. So First Strike gives you a lot of gold when you trade for people, uh, if you can get to hit them first. And if you can combo them down first before it expires, then it can give you a lot of gold. And then Futures Market lets you borrow a lot of gold as well, um, to buy some items that you will otherwise not be able to afford. So when you combine these two rooms, then you're really gonna get those items really fast guys, so I highly recommend that you try out this uh, build. Even if you don't like it, then of course you can always go for Electrocute. This has been like the meta keystone on this champion for so long. You have, you have Electrocute, you also have Conqueror, and now we also have First Strike, so we have three runes that we can choose from. Keep pushing in the silence, it's very important that you split push. The thing I have noticed uh, when people play assassins is they they tend to fall super far behind CS wise, like they can pick up kills and such, but they fall behind in CS and XP. And the way to avoid that is to play like I do right now. Really prioritize getting that farm in the silence as well. So what you do is that you just push out the waves in the silence, so it's going to crash into the enemy tower, then you camp somewhere um, in a brush or something because somebody's going to appear and if it's an 80 carry then that's a free kill. But do be careful that you're not way too extended uh, like I was right here because then of course you are going to get punished for it. It is a champion with huge outplay potential though. So sometimes you might be able to win those 1 vs 2s, 1 vs 3s and so on. But that's entirely up to you, um, it's a champion that takes a lot of games to master, so of course um, if you put a lot of time into him then you're also going to get rewarded. But play him like an assassin, he is an assassin so of course you want to play like that, meaning that you don't go in from the front in a teamfight, you want to be flanking. And you cannot flank if you don't have the red sweeper. Get around people, get into the back line, find the squishy targets, take them out and you're gonna win the team fight. That is how you play assassins and that is also how you want to play set. Um, so that's, that was it for the video, I hope this was helpful, as always thanks for watching and see y'all in the next one.